DaVinci Resolve has just dropped version 20.2.2 and this micro update might have just solved the gamma shift issue that most of the Mac users are facing. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and let's jump right into the video. Right now, I'm on version 20.2.2 and the main thing that has changed is in this DaVinci Resolve menu in your preferences. So if you go into the System General, you will notice that under Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewer, there is this new checkbox here, which is Viewers Match QuickTime Player when using Rec. 709 Scene. So I was quite intrigued by this because I don't usually have this Use Mac Display Color Profile enabled, but once I update to the latest version, it automatically checks it for me. And the reason why I don't have this checkbox enabled is because I'm working on a Mac Studio and I'm using an external monitor, which is an LG. And I find that the Mac OS color profile or the ICC profile that you find in the display settings in your Mac is not exactly accurate when you transfer it into your color viewer over here. But if you're using something like a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, then it might make more sense because your OS and your display is in sync. So as I was saying, I was quite surprised that they automatically have these two checkboxes checked because now after the update, the colors and the contrast in the Vinci Resolve looks very similar with QuickTime. So there's no differences if you view in the native QuickTime player if you're on the Mac OS. And on the flip side, right now, if I uncheck this Use Mac Display Color Profile, it will actually mess up my grid here. So you see there's a jump or there's a difference. The colors get a little bit more saturated and darker. And I know that this is not accurate because I have a reference monitor or a mastering monitor that feeds directly from the Ultra Studio 3G, which is a clean feed. So my mastering monitor will definitely tell me the most accurate signal. So if you have updated to version 20.2.2, make sure that your use Mac display color profiles is checked and then you will have a very accurate representation. So previously, the gamma shift issue is an unsolvable issue for Mac users, and it's somewhat related to the NCLC tagging or metadata tagging, and also the Mac OS color sync utility. That's why our hands are tied where none of the developers want to accommodate each other. So right now, I guess Blackmagic Design and Apple are a little bit more closer since they share their profiles, their progress raw and everything together already. All right, so the big question right now is, what is the best setting for this latest update that will give you no gamma shift issues. And I did tons of tests and uploads to give you a very simple conclusion and a very straightforward workflow. You can skip ahead to the results if you want, but if you're interested to know what are the tests that I did, these are the factors that I tested for. The first element is particularly for node-based color management. What is your ODT, your output color space and output gamma? And within DaVinci Resolve, I always output to Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4 because it's the most compatible one if you're using, let's say, LUTs that are meant for Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4, and it's also a broadcast standard. So this will be a constant for me if I'm doing a node-based color management. On the other side, there is the project level color management. So if I turn off my ODT and my IDT, going into my project settings on the bottom right, into color management, right now I'm on DaVinci RGB and let's switch over to RCM and I'm going to switch this to custom for input I'm going to do S lock 3 because this is what the clip was shot in timeline it doesn't really matter but output color space so the second factor is this output color space in our project level color management and the different variations that I've tested is Rec. 709 scene Rec. 709 gamma 2.4 and also Rec. 709A. We will have a look at the results later on. And the last factor, so if I click on save, you will have your color managed clip. The last factor is in your deliver page. In the advanced settings, there is a color space tag and also a gamma tag. And for these two settings, the variations that I've tested is Rec. 709, gamma 2.4, and Rec. 709A. And after going through the various combinations and pulling it back into DaVinci Resolve as well, because this is what the online editor will see if you export as a colorist. So you see there's a little bit of a difference when it comes to some of the combinations. So the result that I got is this. And let's have a look over here. 
Firstly, the color management technique, which is node-based management and resolve color management RCM, which is a project level color management. So in the node-based color management, the constant I have is fractal 9, gamma 2.4. And in the project settings, which is the one in your settings and output color space here, I've played with different combinations of Rec 9 scene, Rec 9 Gamma 2.4, and Rec 9 A. And for the advanced settings, which is in your deliver page here, and if you see a red X, it means that there is a gamma shift, which is not consistent with what you see in the color page viewer. So in terms of consistency, I've tested re-importing into Resolve and viewing it on QuickTime or just a quick Mac preview. And then we, I've also uploaded it to Frame.io or for web applications such as YouTube, Google Drive, and also VLC. You will notice the concentration of the issues coming from QuickTime and the Mac preview. So as for node-based color management, you can see the one in green is the one that I'm recommending. So for the output color space, gamma 2.4 as usual, output color space in the project settings, you can either set it to Rec 709 scene or Rec 709 a and it gives consistent results throughout all the platforms. But if you opt for a project level color management, then of course you won't have a node-based color management here. So this is dash out. But in the project settings, when you're doing your RCM, you can either set it to Rec 9 Gamma 2.4. And in the advanced setting, you will have to tag it Rec 9 a Or you can tag the output to Rec 9 scene. And for the advanced setting, you can just leave it as same as project. These two are the most recommended settings. If you notice the variable that causes most of the issue is if you are using RCM and you set your project settings to output in Rec 9 a this will give you a very bad gamma shift on any platform that you use. On top of that, I was also curious because I'm editing on a Mac Studio and going into an external monitor. So I was curious whether it works the same on a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. So I did the same test on my MacBook Pro and it seems like it's similar as well. So on the left here is in QuickTime and on the right is in the Resolve Color Viewer. I don't really see that much of a difference except for maybe just a tiny bit in the black over here. But this is a lot less of a gamma shift than what you were experienced previously. So with this update, it's such a massive improvement because right now I can confidently say Whatever you see in your DaVinci Resolve Color Viewer is what you will get when you export it to QuickTime later on. So I hope this was clear enough, but if you're still not sure what settings you should make, you can watch this video because this was a previous video that I did, but it still stands with this update. And if you found something useful, drop a like and subscribe to watch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.